guys, it's Meg Bonnie. I'm the author of Everly, the YA fantasy novel from Pandemon Publishing, which is right there. So we're doing the Ask an Author, and I have some great questions that you guys sent in on Twitter, so I'm going to answer those. The first question is, how many hours a day do you write? So sometimes it's zero, and sometimes it's, you know, four on a really, really good day. Um, but yeah, it varies every day. I have two little kids and a full-time job, so as often as I can which sometimes I wish it was more. And the next question is, what's one thing you'd give up to become a better writer? Um, gosh, that's a really good question. Maybe my day job. It would be nice to focus a little more on writing and just having more time to go to conferences and just keep learning. So I would say maybe just having more time. And how long on average does it take to write a book? I guess from start to finish, um, it took me about seven months for Everly, which had a lot of um, meandering around things. So I would I would probably be more focused on book two. Um, so it's I'll, I'll stick with seven months. I think that's a good answer. And do you believe in writer's block? I believe in not being inspired enough to write or being too tired and some days you just need a glass of wine and some sleep and I know I've been there and that usually helps it does the trick and kind of just like hits the reset button how did publishing your first book change your life well I met a ton of awesome people so just the group at Panda Moon Publishing the different authors and connecting with them has been life-changing um, and on Twitter there's a lot of great writing little groups and just a sense of community on Twitter. So if you're a writer and you don't have a publishing house yet, I would say hook up with some writers on Twitter. It's That's really helpful. And then as a writer, what would you choose as your mascot, avatar, spirit animal, and why? I would have to say a cat because I like to sleep and I guess not be bothered unless I want to be bothered. I know that's probably a terrible answer. Um, the next question is, hang on, it says, how long did you take to come up with the world of Everly? So Everly kind of evolved as I wrote, so it was more character focused, and then as they were in different scenes, I would just, you know, describe the different scenery, and just ha everything had a magical twist, because it's a portal fantasy, so I wanted it to feel magical and um, not in this world. So describing the trees as kind of you know, have a shimmer to them and the grotto that was actually inspired by the glowworm caves in New Zealand but that just pretty sure that's magical too even though it's in our world. And how do you prefer to write all in one go dashing out your thoughts or plan out your story and not go crazy? So I have a, an outline that I follow and it's really, really general. It's um, just kind of what needs to happen in each scene or each chapter. And then I kind of just put the characters in it and see what dialogue they come up with. I know it sounds weird, but um, working on my characters more before I write actually helps me because I just kind of throw them in there and then they tell me what they're going to say. I know that makes me sound completely crazy, but if you're a writer, you probably understand. But just putting them in situations and keeping true to their personalities, it, then the dialogue just kind of flows from there. So a little bit of both. I, I plan out what's going to happen and then I just kind of throw them in there. And then the next question, how do you research for your stories? Lots of weird Google searches, hands-on experimenting, or case studies. So I don't really have any case studies because it's YA fantasy. So maybe the biggest case study would be being a teenager, which I'm not anymore, but it's still pretty vivid. And Google searches, I've had some weird Google searches, like how much pressure do you have to put on someone's neck so that their eye would, you know, they would go bloodshot. Things like that, where if anyone ever looked at them, it would be a little hard to explain. Um, so yeah, I've definitely deleted some Google searches, which I'm sure a lot of writers have. Thank God I don't write like murder mysteries or something, it'd be a lot worse. And when are you satisfied with a draft and was it difficult to say done and let your editor take over yes absolutely it's really hard to 
say, okay, this is perfect and the best it can be. And I'm not even a perfectionist. Um, like I dabble in perfectionist, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty even keeled with that stuff. And, but still when I read it now, um, when I read Everly book one, there's just stuff where I'm like, oh, I could have done this or I could have added this and changed this. So that is always hard just to say, this is, this is absolutely it and perfect. Um, but I think after rounds and rounds of editing, any writer will be like, oh, yeah, just just throw a cover on it. So I guess that helps. Um, you tweeted that your fave villain, TV villain of all time was Lucifer. And do you find villains more interesting than heroes? So if you don't know, Lucifer is the, he's one of the main villains on the show Supernatural, which I cover for um, purefandom.com. And he's just so twisted and not in the traditional sense like he he thinks he's doing the right thing he thinks he is just the most heroic guy in his story so i really like villains like that who think that they are correct and that the hero the typical hero is the one who's just messing stuff up so i really like him and i think that villains are a little more interesting than heroes because they don't have that moral compass that most heroes have so they're just kind of running on you know they have a cause or um, their ambition but they don't really care what happens to people around it or in, on the way to that that goal so it's always more fun to watch and read and write so I have a I have a character who's a witch and she's just maniacal and it's really fun to write her because she only cares about her end game and she doesn't really care what happens to people in the process of her getting that so that's really fun and what's your favorite character to write about? I think I just answered that. Um, I really like writing Cinder. She's the witch. And she she has it set in her head that she's correct. So everything that she does is for her, her goal and her master plan. And the focus, the focus of the story isn't on her. So when she pops in, it's she thinks she's doing the right thing. And that the hero of the story, Maddie, is actually in her way. So it's kind of fun to, to write for a villain who doesn't see the hero as a hero. She sees herself as the hero. And what qualities of yourself are in the Everly characters? So with Maddie, a lot of the hair issues. She hates her hair. I've always hated my hair until I actually just got it chopped off. So maybe Maddie's due for a haircut. Um, and then I would say I'm a lot like her now in my 30s but I was never that confident at 18 like she is so I think that's a really cool quality that she has um and then with Jason he's just kind of more chill which I'm a lot more chill than I am than than Maddie is and she's a little yeah you'd have to read the book but she's she's got her troubles um Jason's more go with the flow so I think that's that's probably more me and then hopefully I don't have anything in common with the witches, but you know, before my coffee maybe. So I guess I guess that's something to consider. But there's a lot of me and Maddie, and I think it's just writing it from first person. It's hard not to do that, especially when you know she's got parent issues and family issues, which that's definitely something that I put in from my own personal life into my writing. So it's it's in there. It's not 100% me, but there's definitely a little little specks of Meg in there. So you'll see that if you read Everly and you know me personally. So I think my husband tells that to everyone that has read it that he knows that, oh yeah, that's Maddie's 100% Meg, but that's not true. She's way cooler than I am. Um, I think I'm, I'm more Jason. So if, you've, if you're familiar with Jason, he's, he's a little bit more chill. Um, but yeah, that, those are some great questions and definitely got me thinking. So thank you for that. And if you see any more little um, tweets go out from Panda Moon Publishing, they are going to be doing more of these. So this was really fun. Thank you. And if you have any more questions, just find me on Twitter and I would love to chat with you. Thank you.